Every few months, the media starts fear-mongering on a debt ceiling. A lot of confusion on this topic. Dude, what the hell are you talking about? Most people can't answer simple questions because they're full of nonsense, such as, who does the U.S. owe money to? What does a debt ceiling even mean? What happens if the U.S. can't pay its debts? So the USA owns $32 trillion to a group called bondholders. What's a bondholder? What does that mean? The debt is called a bond and the lender is called the bondholder. For example, you can lend to the United States right now by buying a treasury bond. In return, the U.S. will promise to pay you back with interest for up to 30 years. You become the lender, aka bond holder, and the USA becomes a borrower. Remember, the word bond comes from bondage because debt is slavery. A treasury bill is a loan for up to one year, treasury note a loan for 10 years, treasury bond a loan for up to 30 years. Anyone who holds these debts, these so-called securities, has lent money to the US government, and they're called bond holders. So the USA owes $32 trillion to these bond holders. Now, who are the bond holders? Another way to say the same thing is, who owns the US debt? This picture is a little outdated. Oh. Alhamdulillah. But things haven't changed that much. The USA owes 30% of its debt to foreign countries, and the USA owes 70% of its debt to US institutions, like banks, investors, Federal Reserve, pensions. This is what they mean when they tell you that the US owes debt to itself. 70% of the national debt is owed to US institutions. But I want you to look carefully. When I said banks, when I said investors, your brain should immediately register Wall Street. These words are code for Wall Street. Average morons like me and you, we don't buy treasury bonds. When's the last time you went, sat in an auction and traded treasury bonds? Don't be a bobblehead and just think for a second. These Wall Street people, they aren't that brilliant. They're just bankers or money managers who eat rib all day. And your brainwashed mind hands them the money to manage your 401k. 30% of the debt is owed to foreign governments, 30% to Wall Street, 20% to Federal Reserve, 20% to benefit programs such as pensions, Social Security. When they say the USA owes 20% of its money to the Federal Reserve, that means the central bank, the Federal Reserve, printed money and lent money to the United States. Now think for a second. Where is this money coming from? The Federal Reserve doesn't have the money sitting in a bank account. The money is printed out of thin air. The money is hidden tax. The money causes inflation. That money was stolen from your wallet to pay these bondholders. It sounds like an easy solution. Instead of taxing you directly, they're just taxing you with inflation. When you print dollars, you have devalued the dollar. The first full debt ceiling was established in 1939 by this law called the Public Debt Act. Doesn't matter. The idea behind a debt ceiling was supposed to be a cap to borrowing. It obviously failed because Congress just keeps raising the debt ceiling. When they say debt ceiling, that just means a cap on borrowing money to pay back old debts. But there's more to it. Why does the USA borrow money in the first place? As you can see from this picture, the green is the taxes it collects, and the red is the expenses. The U.S. is spending way more than it collects in taxes. When you spend more than you get, you go in debt. The USA borrows money because they spend more than they save. The USA borrows money because they don't collect enough in taxes. If the government was serious about cutting expenses, they wouldn't be letting drug companies loot the government, would they? If the government was serious about cutting expenses, would they let Lockheed Martin charge $10,000 for a screw? Think, think. You see, this whole debate about debt ceiling is fake. Instead of addressing this issue, Congress will always increase the debt ceiling because most of Congress is invested in the stock market and if there's chaos these congressmen will lose money in the stock market. So even if you have 10 principal people in Congress, the rest will band together to protect their portfolio. They would rather see the numbers on their stock accounts go up, up, up rather than address the issue. That's why they've raised the debt ceiling so many times. Republicans, Democrats, they pretend to care about the debt ceiling but they aren't willing to do the obvious. Cut expenses, save money. None of them have the courage to do what's right. The problem is obvious. USA needs to stop borrowing money. After a while, the interest accumulates where it's impossible to pay it back. And that's why the US will never, ever pay back its debt. It will eventually have to default because at a certain point, the interest payments start taking up most of the budget. There's no choice. USA will default eventually. And when they default, the bondholders will lose money. That will be a great day. I'm totally fine with bondholders losing money. I want the bondholders to lose money. They should lose money. They're robbing the US taxpayer. They're robbing you because they make money from inflation while you lose money from inflation. And they get away with it because these politicians keep raising the debt ceiling. This is why we should not raise the debt ceiling. More so, making money from interest is inherently unjust. There's a reason why the original teachings of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they forbid interest. We need a real currency. We need a gold-backed dollar. Damn. Trust nothing. No. no.